Thank you. So let us uh, begin with the following. So AI with human value. This, is, uh, this has a question mark. So we don't know whether we can do it. Uh, it seems to be difficult. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it is not possible. Uh, in fact, with AI, people tend to think that everything is possible. Right? Uh, they say that, uh, well, AI is going to take over the world. Right? Uh, it can do everything. Uh, think about the Terminator series. But fictions aside, really, our lives have been transformed uh, by AI technology. Uh, think about the facial recognition software on your phone, the voice rec recognition software. Uh, and if you go online, uh, try this. Uh, type in poem generator or music generator, uh, and you will see that uh, there are this software which can generate a poem for you, just uh, asking you to input a picture, for example. And so there are many things very uh, amazing uh, that uh, AI can do. However, uh, it also has its spectacular failings. Uh, and so let me here share with you two episodes uh, that have gained uh, widespread uh, attention. The first one uh, occurred last summer uh, in 2020, uh, and that is related to the grading of uh, A-level exams. Uh, as we all know, uh, last year the pandemic was raging, uh, and uh, A-level exams were canceled. So how do we assess students? Uh, this creates a huge headache for everyone. So in the UK, uh, basically they did it this way. So they ask teachers to give uh, the grades of the students uh, based on their school performance, and then submitted it to the exam board. Uh, the exam board, of course, won't take the grades as is. Uh, they will do some adjustment using an algorithm. Well, sounds very nice, right? Uh, using an algorithm, it must be very scientific. Uh, and so they did this, uh, and they tried to adjust the grades based on the performance of students from those schools. But then the outcome was a disaster. Students got systematically downgraded, uh, and they, the grades they got were very different from the ones uh, they got assigned from the teachers. And so what happened? So apparently, students from less advantaged schools were more likely to be downgraded uh, than the more advantaged or more rich, uh, the richer schools. And so this uh, creates a big problem, of course, uh, and once people found out uh, this uh, create a great uproar, and afterwards uh, they decided to withdraw those grades and uh, to redo it. So how did that happen? So essentially, what the algorithm did was looking at past data. Right? They look at how students from those schools performed in the past, and they extrapolate and project. Uh, and this should be how students in these schools do today. So that is one example. Another one goes back a little bit uh, in 2018 uh, with the tech company Amazon. Everyone knows Amazon, right? Uh, big tech company. Uh, and they are hiring a lot of people. Uh, and uh, at the uh, peak of the days, uh, there could be up to 20,000 uh, applicants uh, per day. And so if you are working in the HR department of that company, wouldn't it be great if you have an automatic resume parser to help you to throw away, for example, 95% of the resumes and then just focus on the 5%? Well, sounds like a good idea. And being a big tech company, of course, they can do it. They come up with a resume parser, an automatic one. So basically reading the resumes and then decide. Well, after they run it for a while, they realize a serious problem. And that is, it's systematically biased against women. So what happened? Well, apparently, again, it is because of the data. They look at, so how do they train the algorithm to look, uh, to look through these resumes? Essentially, they look at the resumes of the successful applicants from the past 10 years. And tech uh, was a very uh, male-dominated uh, field back then. Uh, it is less so now, but back then it was heavily uh, dominated uh, by male. And so the algorithm picked this up and decided that so the successful applicants should be male. 
Okay? And so this, of course, creates a serious uh, problem, uh, a discrimination uh, issue uh, at hand. So as we see, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, really, there could be some pressing issues that we need to address. Uh, in particular, how intelligent is artificial intelligence? Of course, it can do a lot of computations very fast, very quickly, but it seems to lack the critical thinking ability uh, to evaluate the consequences of its actions. And that is uh, more like a tech question, but there are also other issues that uh, arise from those two episodes that I mentioned. As we all know, our societies have laws that uh, pro uh, prohibits uh, discrimination. For example, in students' uh, admission, you cannot discriminate against a uh, student's background. Right? In hiring, you cannot discriminate against gender or disabilities. So it is illegal to do so. But now what if a computer, an algorithm, did that? Who is liable? Right? That raises a very interesting legal and ethical uh, issue. Now, so to understand a little bit uh, how we can go about fixing this, uh, let us take a brief look at how machine learning or artificial intelligence systems uh, work in a high level. So think about how we learn as humans. Well, when we were a kid, we look at examples, right? Uh, we try to mimic, uh, and then we try to draw uh, conclusions from the patterns we observed, uh, and that is how we learn. And in some sense, that is also how machines learn. So what are the, those examples? Well, they will come in the form of data. So more concretely, consider an image recognition software where I'm trying to recognize pandas. So my data will be a lot of pictures of pandas, right? Different poses, different places, different shapes, different sizes, and so on. And then the algorithm will try to pick up what are the features of a picture that contain a panda. Right? For example, there is this black spot, white spot, right? maybe bamboo behind it, uh, maybe uh, with this round ears, etc. And so what it is doing, the algorithm is doing, is trying to train a classifier, or more simply, a model, that tells you, okay, if you give me this picture, then I will output, okay, this is a panda or not. So this is what the box uh, with a gear uh, is, uh, denotes. And then so that is uh, what uh, comes out of it. Now, however, um, uh, what the model that we train uh, is about, we don't really, uh, we can't really explain. Uh, it is more like a black box. You give me an input, and then I will tell you, okay, so this is a panda or not. But we don't really understand the mechanism inside how it decides this is a panda or not. Okay? So uh, in essence, the algorithm just pick up the features in the data. So the more often the feature appear, the more likely it got picked up by the algorithm. And so if you uh, link this back to the two episodes that we introduced earlier, for the A-level uh, episode, the algorithm is picking up the performance of students from different schools, and they observe, so the algorithm observe, that students from the richer schools tend to do better, right? Uh, and in the Amazon example, the algorithm picked up the fact that most of the uh, employees back then were male. And so that is how they encode. And so you can see that the algorithm automatically encode this kind of socioeconomic bias or gender bias into the model. Hmm, interesting, right? So how do we fix it then, right? So maybe one natural thought is, can we tell the algorithm not to look at those aspects? For example, in the Amazon episode, let's tell the algorithm you cannot look at the gender of the applicant. Wouldn't that solve the problem? Well, unfortunately, the problem is not so simple. Because even if you instruct the algorithm not to look at the gender, there may be other pieces of the same resume that review that information. For example, in the resume, that may say that person is coming from a women's school. Right? Or maybe that person participated in the women's volleyball team. Then the algorithm may be able to pick up these little clues and then piece together a picture and then give a conclusion that, okay, this is a um, 
female applicant. So it seems like a challenging problem. So how do we go forward? So it seems like a tech problem, right? Because we are trying to fix the algorithm. And indeed, from the engineering side, there are attempts to fix this. Uh, and there is a very popular research area these days called interpretable machine learning. So simply put, it is just the research on how can we explain the black box, right? Can we develop models that are more explainable, more predictable? So given an input, I can explain why it produced that output. But that is just one piece of the puzzle. How about the other issues that we raise, which are more of a legal and ethical uh, nature? Well, this is also uh, being studied. Uh, but then the question is, how should we incorporate uh, AI design principles uh, into the design of uh, AI systems? Uh, and so this is currently underway. Uh, there are many different thoughts. Uh, people are coming up with all sorts of things. But essentially, there are five uh, principles that are uh, pretty much common across uh, all the parties. And uh, they are the following. So we have already addressed one of them, which is transparency. Uh, that is related to whether you can explain the model. But of course, we also care about fairness and justice, right? Whether the system respects equality, diversity, and inclusion. There is this beneficence. Uh, simply put, it is like the model of one big tech company, do no harm. Uh, and then you have uh, this uh, responsibility, uh, need to be accountable uh, and honest, the system. And also privacy. Uh, this is what we all care about with uh, data privacy, uh, how uh, they, uh, the system is protecting our uh, data. So with these principles, various countries, regions, and institutions, they started uh, establishing more specific guidelines for the things that they are concerned about. So let me give you some examples. Uh, let's say uh, the European Union, uh, they have this GDPR, uh, General Data Protection Regulation, which requires website to let the users know what kind of data they are collecting and what are they using it for. Uh, in Germany, they have established guidelines for autonomous vehicles. So there are a whole list of uh, principles that they want to follow, uh, for example, one that is quite interesting is they say in a hazardous situation, the top priority should be human life, even if it means damage to animal life or property. Uh, and there are also other uh, guidelines in other places, like in UK, there is a Center for Data Ethics and Innovation. Here in Hong Kong, we have an ethical accountability framework. So with all this, uh, so uh, how, how should we go forward? Right, uh, so to wrap up, let us go back to the original question uh, that we posed. AI with human values, is it even possible? Well, it is still a long shot, but we need to start somewhere, correct? Um, <clears throat> and we, here, uh, it really requires a dialogue uh, between uh, the technical people, uh, the people uh, from engineering, science, uh, but also from uh, uh, people from disciplines outside of uh, STEM, right? Uh, so because uh, some pressing questions include how should we standardize uh, the AI ethics uh, principles? Uh, I mentioned five, but naturally you can think about much, many more, right? And once you come up with these principles, how do you incorporate it uh, in the design of AI systems? Uh, and that is a technical question. And so this really, needs a broader dialogue among all uh, stakeholders. Uh, actually, basically, that would be everyone because we are all using them. And rethink our approach to uh, technology. And in some sense, this really fits into the theme uh, of this series, we rebirth. Uh, this uh, endeavor will result in a rebirth of AI system. So to all of you, uh, whether you are in the tech field or not, really, uh, Try to understand more about the current AI technology, their strengths and limitations. Of course, technologies can do many things. But I will leave you with this question. Should we do it?
Thank you.